in further on this one with Phil Wegman, White House correspondent for Real Clear Politics, who's also a Steamboat Institute Blankley Fellow, and also News Nation political contributor Joanna Masca. Uh, thanks to both of you for being on. Phil, I'll start with you. Let's just do a little fact checking here. I mean, how valid is this claim by KJP that President Biden has done more to secure the border than anybody else? Because it's certainly not matching up with the reality of anything we're seeing or hearing on the ground. Well, to give the administration credit, post Title 42, with some of their new immigration policies there on the southern border, there was a drop in immigration in June. We saw those numbers increase in July, though. And if you zoom out just a little bit and look at the larger picture, like you mentioned a second ago, uh, last year set record levels, I think 2.4 million interactions between Border Patrol and migrants. And of course, that doesn't even count uh, the, the gotaways. So it is a, um, you know, it's an optimistic claim, but uh, there's a lot of scrutiny uh, when you actually compare it to the data. Yeah, we've talked to experts on the border, sheriffs who say, you know, the numbers don't tell the full story. Uh, we're still seeing gotaways, uh, people that the numbers don't reflect. Joanna, Data from Border Patrol and Office of Field Operations found that in fewer than two years in office, President Biden racked up more than a million more migrant crossings than President Trump did his entire time at the, in the White House. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez also recently said immigration is arguably this administration's weakest issue. If Democrats don't even mm -hmm. think the president is doing a good job on immigration, I mean, how can the administration and Karine Jean-Pierre claim to be doing more than anybody else on the border. How did you take those statements? Well, number one, hyperbole from the White House podium rarely works out for any administration. But I think the trouble for the Biden administration is what does good look like? For different people, that means very different things. AOC is not alone in, when it comes to Democrats who are criticizing Biden on this. In fact, I was at dinner with a group of Democrats who worked in the Obama administration who were all saying, how are some of our colleagues working in this administration and what are they doing on this? They set a very very high expectation coming in and saying this was going to be the first thing that they were going to work on. But I hate to remind AOC that it does actually take congressional legislation and she is sitting there in Congress to actually see anything change other than the executive orders and the things that Biden has already put in place. Yeah. And do you think it's fair, Joanna, to say that maybe President Biden's approach to border security and, and fort fortifying the border is less so about the physical border and the communities that accompany it and more about protecting migrants? I don't know that that's fair. In fact, I remember coming to Los Angeles after the Obama administration and people calling President Obama the deporter in chief. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of people who are actually very concerned that Biden is continuing too many of the Trump uh, era policies. But at the same time, <laughs> we are seeing, you know, more people get to the U.S. who are in this massive line for refugee status. And that's going to be a problem for any administration going forward without congressional legislation. Yeah. And I know also back in May, the Biden administration enacted that family deportation program in the month of August. 91,000 people came across who were considered to be part of a family group. And in that time, 97 migrants have been deported. Uh, the numbers are pretty staggering. Phil, I'll end with you. How do you see this issue playing out for Democrats going into 2024? Is there anything that the White House can do to, to spin this into a positive? Or are they just banking on the fact that come next November, most voters aren't going to be making their presidential choice based on border policy? So normally this is the type of issue that Republicans would be ragging on the administration about. But what we've seen in the last couple of months is that this is no longer just a, a red state thing. Uh, in fact, New York and New York City, uh, both the mayor and governor there have been leaning on the administration to do more. And I think that that's why this is going to be an issue that is going to continue into next year, that is going to continue uh, to perhaps influence the presidential election, because it's not just red states. Of course, you have, uh, you know, Governor Abbott and others in the border region, um, you know, sending migrants to New York, raising the alarm. But now also you have some of these uh, blue cities and states who are telling the administration to do more. The problem is, uh, of course, and I think Johanna pointed this out really well, is that right now there's not an appetite among Democrats or Republicans to do something substantive legislatively. And so the uh, humanitarian crisis at the border is going to continue. Yeah, when you have uh, Democratic New York City Mayor Eric Adams calling it a crisis, 
something's wrong <laughs> at the southern border. Phil Wegman, Joanna Masca, thank you so much for joining us ahead of your holiday weekend. Great Let's to join.